So me and Barney have bought a bloody van. This is our van, our beautiful, beautiful van. Might not be the most beautiful van, but it's gonna be our perfect van. Check it out. The adventure begins. So inside, this is what it looks like at the moment. It comes with a little bit of racking of some kind, some variety. That can go. Pretty much an empty van. First stop is to remove this bulkhead. Barney, how do you like the van? What do you think, huh? Isn't it the best? Every time I get in here, he loves it. Every time I open the door, he's right in here. I'm gonna be spending an awful lot more time in here soon, mate. So I'm en route to finishing taking all the bolts out of my bulkhead. And that will be the first job done. I've bored out a couple. This one is gonna need some assistance. I have removed as many bolts as I can with my allen key. Job done of the day. <laughs> Check it out. Mark gave me a hand removing the bulkhead. Thank you very much, Mark. So, we've got the bulkhead out. We've got the shelving that came with the van out. And now, to rip off these sides. Let's see what's underneath, shall we? Exciting. <laughs> Here are the van walls. They <laughs> look pretty bloody good, honestly. There aren't a lot of rusty spots that I can see. Nice van. So, next stop, the floor. I've got all the bits out of the floor so far. I think there is one left though. I think we've just got this guy here. But we've kind of whacked him in, so hopefully I can just clean up the floor and pull up the floor. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> not bad, not bad. So, I'm going to attempt to uh, pull up the floor. There's one bolt still left in the floor. Here. Ooh. Oh! That is so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay. going to become the most perfect template in the world for my next floor. <laughs> Let's have a look. Not too bad. Not too shabby. It's all these obvious bits of rust. I'm going to sand back, whack some iron oxide on. But that is not a terrible looking van, is it? It's not bad. Here he is. I'm pretty sure the van's a he, you know. I keep going to say here she is, but I think it's a he. We'll see how things turn out, but... He hasn't quite got a name yet, but I feel being a van. He's more of a he. All these rusty bits. I'm now taking the drill 
with a nice wire brush, sanding it back until all the rust is gone and you just see shiny metal. I think this is a really good point to show you something. This was just a rusty area, all covered in white, and I filled it down. And you can see where the rust was obvious here, but where I've sanded it back, you can see where the rust got to. And this black edge is really the end of the rust that was over here. This is what was underneath one of those. This is just held down by some sort of silicone or something and we can pull this guy off. Well, I did the other one, but you know. Give it a bit of strength. <laughs> that is what this did look like. Ta-da! No black ring anymore. So that really manky one is polished up quite nicely. All these wheel arches, I'm gonna need some work. I did start down here. But yeah, definitely need some more work. Soon, just be the shiny stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is what we are currently working with. I think I've just finished the sanding of all the rust. So all those dots that you see on the floor, it's everywhere I could find bits of rust. The wheel arches were super rusty. You can finally start doing some fun things. And here she is. Can you see any rust? No rust left. Complete with naughty paw print. <laughs> So we're having the welding done, out with Barnabas. We've had all this outside of the wheel arch sanded back and welded, so I'm going to wax some uh, more red oxide on the outside of there before we put the wheel back on. And there we have it, one colorited, red oxided arch wing. Hello, hello, hello. So it is a beautiful English summer's day. I've just turned 30. <laughs> what more can I say? Right, let's check out the van. I've cleaned it all up. And it's ready for some gold hammerite paint on this stuff. So I've managed to paint half of the van in the gold hammerite paint. Pimp my van or what? I've ran out, it was one of those size tins. I've got that smoky blue that I accidentally bought, which would be perfect for the bit that it didn't reach. And there she is, blue bottom, gold bottom, all ready now to dry off and uh, get the thermal film deadening liner in. So I've just laid out all the uh, sand deadening thermal liner to see if it fits. I think I've just about bought enough. Right, so here is the old van floor. I'm going to use this as my template to uh, whack this. What did I go for? I think I went for 18 millimeter. No, I didn't. I went for 12 millimeter hardwood plywood. A couple of those. It's the perfect length, <laughs> amazingly. So uh, I just need to cut out the wheel arches, basically. Not far off. 
so you see it's pretty much there but this bit and this bit is obviously stopping it being perfect so the question is do i remove that bit and that bit or do i just cut that bit mm. Stanley knife that's all you need isn't it lovely right so hopefully it should fit now if it doesn't fit now i did it wrong <laughs> and would you look at that it's perfect amazing you literally couldn't get anything down there it's so tight so i've just finished popping all the aluminium foil all around the seams of where the gaps were so now the floor is totally gapless I'm going to take the ply out now, coat it with some of this stuff that makes kindly lent me SBR. don't really know what it is, but I'm told it's the right stuff. Future problems. No these gaps. So, found myself a little flattening tool. Don't really know what it's used for, but I'm gonna use it. To pop some of this premium cork, which on the back, it states that it is for sealing and filling of gaps and cracks where movement can occur, which sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. All these gaps where movement is definitely going to occur. I'm gonna pop that in my new plunger thing. Smooth it off. So it's totally flat and it won't bother the things that I'm going to put nice and flush on here, I'm sure. Right, I'm quite happy with that. I've got all of the cracks all the way around the van. Potentially sealed up. It looks like a bit of a mess, but I'm alright with that. It's functional. So I went ahead and did it, filled in this gap with the cork too. Now there really is no gaps. Exciting, exciting, exciting.
too small, which is the main thing. So that is all cut to size. Now just to stick it. Very, very exciting. going back now. Nice and shiny set, huh? I don't know how long that will last. We've uh, drawn out the sink shape and then I sort of skirted along the inside edge with another line. Funny. <laughs> and I'm going to cut along that and hope the sink fits. Just have to wait for the battery to charge. sheets on the roof. It's supposed to cover 50% of the panels at least, which should uh, stop all the rain sound being so annoying. I've done these pieces, a bit of a sink forming, toilet area forming, and the log to bring the bed up to height. Thank <laughs> you. 
kind of coming along now. Getting there, I've insulated the back doors. I've got a cabinet down here that's forming. Looks a little bit wonky there. Nice cabinet, I've added some gold leaf to the top as well. You can just about to see all the shine and I'll varnish the top of that. This is going to be the battery store area. It really is kind of taking shape now and looking like somewhere you can live in. Pretty cool, huh, Barney? So, for my LED lights for the roof, I've drawn around my LEDs. Oh, you want me to throw that, do you, mate? <laughs> I've drawn around all the LEDs and now I'm going to cut out those LED shapes. I just pop the lights up. Look at those. NEDs. Not bad. Just look at the difference a little bit of wood stain makes. This one, nasty. This one, gorgeous. Just a coat as well. Kinda becoming a real van now. Good morning. So today is a very, very, very special day. It is a van roof day. <laughs> and the roof is absolutely filthy. Just look at that beautifully filthy roof. So we are on top of the van roof. I've got some electrical tape, but I'm going to scout out the uh, I'm going to continue on with the rest of the tape in. That will show me what the inside parameter is. And then just let the paper as my screw mill and add it to that and cut the whole bit size. Wish me luck. Well, there she is, my beautiful horse box vent template. Now to go and get the drill and do the scary bit. So we're learning a new trick. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> right then, I think I'm pretty much ready to go. I've got everything around me that I could possibly need, I think. <sighs> Time to cut this hole. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the metal cutting colour. Pretty sure. <laughs> Gold. Oh, this is terrifying. Is it? Ooh, it's the metal cutting colour. It's close. It is terrifying. And it's one of them. Not one like that. Oh, 
<laughs> battery's flat. <laughs> I charged it for a little while this morning, but it must have been pushed in right, you know. <laughs> Look at what I've done. It was so scary. <laughs> so, I've kind of made the first cut. Take two. <laughs> you now have a fully charged battery. <laughs> went through easily. Oh, that's so scary. I bought an angle grinder for the job and uh, I've never used an angle grinder before so I decided I'd buy them. find the metal pile I reckon. Membranes. I was looking for something called burial tape, and this is the closest thing I could find. I'm hoping it's the same thing. It's a little bit thick. I think this is my old box. Everyone's given me stick about it, told me not to use it and just go silicone or roofing squid stuff. But I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> I don't know how well it's done, but it's done. Let me show you. So we've got the tape, box, screws, and then all the silicone covering all those edges. Pretty good. <laughs> Hello. So now we're getting into the really serious stuff. The stuff that I have that I hope I've got my head around enough to do. We have a set of very rusty tyres, and I'm detaching my one battery. I'm going to disconnect it. First with the negative terminal, then the positive, then it's disconnected and I can start my split charge relay kit. <laughs> my van battery is right underneath my uh, seat, which is really handy. Anyway, it's really good if you have the right tools for the job. Not much further to go. It's too stiff to do on my hands. Great, I lost it. Okay, so this is where things start to get crazy. This the split charge relay. So first job is to screw a couple of fuse boxes to a board. Take me to cope with that. <laughs> We're supposed to screw these, three, these fuse boxes as close to the positive terminal of your main leisure battery as you can. Two fuse boxes successfully screwed to the board. And 
Then she said, let there be light. We have our first piece of cable cut. Check out these guys. Right, so on one end I need an 8mm and on another end I need a 6mm. And I have no idea what that meant yesterday. Uh, but how do I know what that means? So it turns out these things that came in the pack have got numbers on them. And one of them says 10-6 and the other one say 10-8. I'm assuming 10-6 is a 6 and 10-8 is an 8. Get these crimpy guys. Pop them in the crimpy. Let's have a go at heat shrinking, see if this is any fun. Probably not. Two fuse boxes screwed in and split charge relay kit I just glued on. It's pretty secure. I've made a wire. This end over here is called a six, so that's what fixed onto the fuse. And this end over here is going to connect on to my main battery of the van. This guy is an eight. Now I need to make a cable that's going to run from the fuse to the split charge relay. Okay, let's make some cables. So, I've got to decide how long I want it, but I know it's positive cable. I'm going to take some of these guys, cut it. Woohoo! I'm going to take these guys and just like take them to about here. Strip them. And then we expose the wire. I'm going to twist the wire. I really don't like it. I don't enjoy any of this actually. It's all grip work. It just hurts. But it works. I just don't think there's anything my grip strength can do to make it like indestructible, you know? I need a hydraulic version. And you'll shrunk down. And that one's pretty good too. I might not have made this wire long enough, you know. Oh, I don't really want to do another one, my hands hurt. This one go from split charge relay to fuse number two. So today we are on another day of crimping. We love crimping. Lord. Today my hands are already so oh sore and bruised from yesterday. I'm enjoying it even more. I, I don't normally complain about pain or effort, but this crimping situation I genuinely struggled with. Right, so let me show you what's going on. Down here, I've popped on a terminal that came in the set, my negative of my leisure battery. And today I'm going to pretend I only have one battery because I haven't got the, the right terminal connector to link these batteries up. So this is my negative of my leisure battery. I'm going to whack one end of my black wire I've just made up on here and then I'm going to put the other end of it onto the negative of my main battery, just over here. Oh, you got a new toy! Do you like it? Reindeer. And Bernie's got a new Christmas present early. We've got some new cushions, and we've done these pillows. These cushions. We're going to think about doing these doors. Another bit of fabric on the door. Over there too. Doors are now fabric. And two cushions. So we've got all of my station down here. Spices, food. I'm not going round. We've got the light. The diesel heater going on down here. We've got hot air coming through here. 
I have just added this pipe to either side of my pump down here, which then carries on round and leads to my tap here. I've just turned the pump on, with any luck, when I press this, water will fly out. Come on! Whoa! Woohoo! We have water! Oh my goodness, look at this. Would you look at the hole in my sink? <laughs> We've got this guy to go in it. Does he fit? Oh, he fits! Beautiful stuff. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Alright, so I've drawn a cross where I want the waste pipe to go. I'm going to drill a hole in there. Just hope there's nothing underneath. Okay, so bad news. I've drilled the hole and there is something underneath. I could do it. Here. Oh, nightmare. Right, I'm gonna drill another hole and hope this time there's nothing underneath. Second hole complete and it's clear. Nothing underneath. Woohoo! And we'll move the sink forward and we'll just stick it like that. <laughs> and that will be our waste pipe. Beautiful. Fix all! <laughs> well, I'd personally say that's loads. Ooh, you dropped it. Turn it upside down. <laughs> it pulled out this time. No. Interesting. <laughs> Doesn't look right, does it? Cool. So I've just popped the sink in. The drain pipe goes down through the hole. Looks slightly off. So hopefully my glue situation on the bottom is good enough and strong enough to hold it. All seems pretty good at the moment. I've attached the overflow pipe. I've just filled up the water and now we're going to fill up the sink until we reach the overflow and hopefully it all works. Okay, I'll tap. Plug in. There's a lip that shouldn't be there. Let's go. No leaks down here so far. I've got a hose on it. It is super long but it's sat in its box here. Look at it. Looking pretty good. Are we getting anything out of the bottom? Yeah, we've got drainage. Still no leaks. That is so exciting. Right, let's do the big one. Whoa! See how much water drains out. Do a bit still that here. And then you've got a nice load of water <laughs> that you can't get rid of. Ideal. Oh my god, I've just thought of a genius idea. I could take my, my pump, pop it in the sink, and then turn on my tap. Nom nom nom. <laughs> right, so we've just got home. 
We've got the uh, water on the board on our beautiful £10 hob. And he's finishing off his dindins. Oh, we've got carrots and couscous and haricot beans. And a bit of uh, salmon. No, not salmon, sorry. Uh, mackerel. Herbs and spices. I've got a nice horse box briefing. Just uh, flicks open and flicks back down. Toilet lives under here. A little cushion on. I use it for a seat quite a lot as well. And the sink is under here. Around here. Storage, milk, some bits and bobs, Barney's uh, toys, blankets, guitar behind cushions, <laughs> no, no, all my batteries and things are under here. Fire alarm, of course. That is the van. <laughs> and this is what my van looks like from the outside, and all the lights are on in there. Barney's inside. And I don't think it's bloody obvious. You can kind of tell when you get here, to be fair. But until you get to the front, check out the Christmas tree. Nana gave me that. And until you get to the front, you can't really tell. I do look very covert, don't I? Did you see well, sir? What's happened, Barno? We got the AA. Oh, the poor van.